Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on the Mirror Lessons channel. I'm your host Matt and in this episode we're going to talk about the Canon EOS R6 and the Sony 7 Mark III. And this is going to be a full comparison. The episode you're watching right now is all about photography. But if you're also interested in the movie recording capabilities of the two cameras, we have a separate video just for that and I'll leave the links in the cards in the description below. So let's get started and let's have a look at the two cameras. Here we have. Canon EOS R6, Sony A7 Mark III. So they are both weather sealed. They both have a magnesium alloy chassis. And as you can see, the R6 is a bit bigger than the A7 Mark III. And one of the distinctive uh, characteristics of the R6 is the taller grip, larger grip. And uh, I find it more comfortable because I can rest all my fingers with enough space, even for the middle fingers. And so I do prefer this larger grip. Also like the button, the shutter button position on the Canon better. With the A7 Mark III, it's okay, but I do have to squeeze my fingers a little bit more, especially the little finger tends to slip off quite easily. So overall, I do find it a bit less comfortable. Of course, this also depends on how big or small your hands are. Both cameras feature a good amount of control with different buttons and dials. They also have an AF joystick each. And on top, for example, the S7 Mark III also has an exposure compensation dial. I do prefer the control on the Canon overall. I find, for example, the dials to be more responsive, more precise to use. All the buttons are softer to press and they give you a better tactile feedback. Also, the AF joystick is more precise to use and you can also uh, change the sensitivity in the menu. The only button I don't really like is this one, the um, M function button here because when I use DVF I keep confusing it with the uh, movie recording button. It's a bit too small, it's kind of in an awkward position, but that's my only complaint really. On the A7 III there are more buttons you can customize. There are tens in total, whereas on the Canon there's only eight. And for example, the rear wheel, it's less precise to turn, but you can also operate it in four different directions, whereas on the Canon it's rotation only. You can also customize the AV joystick with a different function. One unique feature of the Canon RF system is that every lens has a function ring. You can customize, you can use it, for example, to change the aperture or the ISO, or the exposure compensation. So that's something you won't find on Sony lenses. I find the Canon menu system better organized concerning the main sections and automatically adapts to still or video shooting mode. You get used to it easily, but some areas are a bit messy, like for example, the AF settings that are not easy to understand straight away. That said, Sony also has weird names for some of its parameters. Both cameras have a My Menu page where you can save your favorite settings, as well as a Quick Menu, which is called Function Menu on the Sony. The Quick Menu on the Canon can't be customized. Both cameras have two SD card slots. Uh, the Canon R6 has two slots that are UHS-2, so you can use UHS-2 cards on both slots, whereas on the Sony, only the uh, slot number one, which is this one, is UHS-2, the other one is UHS-1. If we look on the other side, the Sony has a microphone input, headphone output, a micro HDMI output, USB-C and USB micro USB 2 port. The R6 also has audio input and output. There's a USB-C port, a micro HDMI port, and there's also a 2.5 millimeter jack port for the remote control. Both cameras can be charged or powered via the USB-C port. However, keep in mind that for the Canon, you need a high current power bank or adapter. Not every power bank will work. The one I have, for example, doesn't work. So if you're looking for a power bank for the R6, do a bit of research and make sure you find the right one. Another thing with the R6 is that if you turn off the camera, the shutter curtain closes as well to protect the sensor. So no dust can go onto the sensor. That can be useful if you're changing lens, for example. Uh, some people do say that having dust going on the shutter curtain can also be a problem. So not everybody agrees with this solution. If you don't want this to happen, you can change that in the menu and leave the shutter curtain open even when the camera is turned off. Then we have the batteries and they're similar in terms of specs and also in performance, they last for long. They're very good batteries. And for example, with the R6, I took more than 2,600 pictures of birds using continuous AF, the electronic shutter, and it only used 36% of the charge and the Sony performs in a similar way. The Canon R6 has a better viewfinder. It has more resolution. It has a faster refresh rate. 
it has a slightly lower magnification, but combined with the 23mm eye point, I can see the four corners of the screen better when wearing glasses. The A7 Mark III viewfinder, it's a good one, but it starts to feel a bit out of date now when it comes to specification, like for example the resolution and other things. Then we have the LCD screen on the Canon, it has a multi-angle mechanism, so you can rotate even 180 degrees if you want. Uh, the screen has more resolution as well, whereas on the Sony you do have a tilting only mechanism. Both screens are touch sensitive, but you can do more things on the Canon. You can take a picture, for example, you can navigate the menu and you can also change settings. And overall, I find it to be more precise and more responsive. On the Sony, the touch screen can be used mainly to move the autofocus point. And if you go to manual focus, you can also double tap to activate magnification. Both screens can be used to move the autofocus point while composing with EVF. Both cameras have a full frame sensor. The R6 has 20 megapixels, whereas the 7 Mark III has 24 megapixels. They both have an anti-aliasing filter, a low pass filter, and the A7 Mark III has a BSI back illuminated structure. So let's see how these two sensors and their image processor compare, and let's start with the resolution. Here is how the two images look when enlarged with the same magnification. The details on the 7 Mark III are a bit bigger, but we're talking about 20% less resolution on the R6. If you're interested in out-of-camera JPEGs, the Canon offers three settings to control sharpness, whereas the A7 Mark III has only one. The Sony already looks sharper with the default settings, whereas it's difficult to play with the parameters on the R6 without making the image look over-sharpened and a bit less natural. Here we have a first shot exposed for the highlights outside the window. And this is how it looks after four stops recover in post-production. If we look at the darker areas of the photo, in this case the bottom corner, they both show some color artifacts. In our second example, we attempt to recover the highlights, and both cameras preserve a similar amount of details. For the JPEG lovers out there, the R6 has more settings to control dynamic range. The first is called Highlight Tone Priority, which, how the name suggests, will preserve more highlights details. Keep in mind that the minimum ISO becomes 200. Auto Lighting Optimizer boosts the shadows, but it is less efficient than the DR Optimizer setting found on the A7 Mark III. Another tool available on the OSR6 is the HDRPQ format, which saves 10-bit HEIF files, or HEI files, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and for comparison, a JPEG is 8-bit. In my test, I found it to be effective in retaining more highlights information, but it is important to have the highlight tone priority setting we saw before enabled. The problem is that not many softwares are compatible with this new format, at the time of publishing this video at least, including Lightroom and Photoshop. The workaround is to either use the HAVE to JPEG conversion built-in camera, but there is no batch processing there, or use the Canon Digital Professional 4 software. In both cases though, there is a loss of saturation when converting the files. The R6 and A7 Mark III have a very similar ISO range, the main difference is that with the normal range, the Canon has an extra step in the high values. And one thing I've noticed from the start is that there is a difference in brightness, a difference in exposure when you set your two cameras with the same exact settings, so that is with the same aperture, shutter speed and ISO value. The R6 image is approximately half a stop darker than the Sony. To make the side-by-side -side images easier to look at, I try to match the exposure as much as possible. The results are very similar up to 6400 ISO, where at that point the R6 shows a bit less noise than the 7 Mark III. Noise increases from 12800 ISO on both cameras. With the out-of-camera JPEGs, the Sony shows more color noise when noise reduction is turned off. The R6 image is cleaner with noise reduction set to low or standard. 
The Canon also has a high level and a multi noise reduction mode that merges three images to reduce noise further. Another test I performed is the ISO-less test, also known as ISO invariance. The idea behind it is that if a sensor is ISO-less, you can take a shot at lower ISO value, meaning underexposing the image, and recover the exposure in post with the same quality you would get when shooting at a higher ISO value, which would be the correct exposure. The advantage of such method is that you preserve more highlights. The R6 shows a similar amount of noise between the underexposed image recovered in post and the one taken at the higher ISO level. On the 73 the post-process image looks a bit worse than the one taken at higher ISO. Let's talk about colors now. If I open the two RAW files with Lightroom Classic, they look very similar, with the default color profile applied by the software which is Adobe Color. Remember that different programs will apply different color profiles. If we turn to the picture styles found on each camera, called Creative Styles on the 73 there are a few more things to talk about. With the standard profile, the green pepper has a bit more contrast and darker shades, whereas the orange is a bit more saturated on the Sony file. With the neutral profile, the colors are more vibrant on the EOS R6. Then each camera has other profiles with their distinctive characteristics, but I'm not going to show you all of them. Keep in mind that some of the Canon profiles, like neutral or faithful, have less sharpness assigned by default. The A7 Mark III has more profiles in total, 13 versus 7. And here is an example with the landscape profile. With skin tones, there are more relevant differences. On the raw files, with the same color temperature and tint values, the R6 image is warmer and softer overall, especially when it comes to yellow and orange, whereas the Sony has a reddish magenta dominance. The same difference accentuated with more contrast on each is valid for the straight out of the camera JPEGs and standard profile. The Canon portrait style is brighter but has lots of reds in the medium shades. The Sony has less contrast and a smoother, more subtle look. For the R6, I prefer the neutral profile which has less contrast and shows more uniformity while maintaining all the different shades of the skin. Neutral gives the S7 Mark III portrait less saturation. Quick feedback about other things, so for example auto white balance, I found the Canon to be a bit cooler than the Sony when using auto white balance in the same situation and that is valid for natural light outside and also artificial light inside. The R6 metering tends to overexpose by two thirds of a stop in comparison to the Sony and that is valid for different settings like a multi center weight or spot. And the Sony has a few extra options for metering, for example it has a large spot mode and also has a preserve highlights mode. The two cameras feature an advanced autofocus system with phase detection points. The one on the Canon is called Dual Pixel CMOS AF2. 2 stands for a new version that Canon introduced with the R6 and the R5. Now I'm not going to dig into all the technicalities of how this autofocus system works, but I'm going to show you how they perform with some real world examples. When AF tracking is used, the R6 autofocus can work across the entire sensor surface, meaning there is 100% coverage even when face and eye detection is enabled. With other AF areas, it's 90% horizontal and 100% vertical. When using the single AF point, you can move it across more than 6,000 positions. On the A7 Mark III, there are 693 face detection points that cover 93% of the sensor area and also 425 contrast detection points that can help in low light situations. In single autofocus mode, which is called one shot AF on the Canon, they both do fine, they're both fast. The R6 feels a bit faster overall, but it's not a big difference. However, with some lenses, the Sony tends to be a bit slower because you can see the movements of the lens elements while acquiring focus. It almost looks like it's using contrast detection instead of phase detection. It doesn't happen with all lenses, but for example, it happens with my 55mm 1.8. Now let's see how the performance is in low light. So there is a difference when it comes to the minimum sensitivity. The R6 has a minimum sensitivity of minus 6.5 stops with the 1.2 aperture, which means it's minus 5 stops with the f2 aperture, whereas the Sony A7 III has minus 3 EV with the f2 aperture. So the Canon is 2 stops more sensitive in low light. 
This is an extreme low light test where the subject walked towards the camera in an almost pitch dark living room. What is impressive is that the EOS R6 can focus on the eye of the subject even when she is basically completely in the dark. I used the 24105mm f4 zooms on both cameras to make the test even harder. In the sequence, the Sony was able to capture only 4 shots, and 2 of them were out of focus. The R6 took 26 shots, meaning it was able to change focus more quickly and follow the subject better, giving a hit rate of about 75%. Of course, it is worth stressing out that this is an extreme test and you likely won't find yourself in such tricky conditions. Let's talk a bit more about face and eye detection, something Sony is famous for, especially when it comes to IAF. In this first sequence, the subject walks back and forth, then walks a second time while turning 360 degrees. The aim of the second walk is to see how well the cameras keep tracking the subject where the face is no longer visible. The R6 gave a splendid 95% keeper rate with only one shot out of focus and two slightly soft. When the subject turned around, the performance was the same. The only thing I noticed is that sometimes the camera focused on the furthest eye rather than the nearest eye while the subject was moving. The A7 Mark III struggled more to change focus quickly and had a lower keeper rate of 63%. Interestingly, if the subject wears a hat, the Canon can get confused more easily and misfocus on the brim of the hat rather than the eyes of the subject, as you can see here. The way you set and use eye detection is also different on the two cameras. On the R6, you have to select the tracking AF method and the camera will focus on the eyes automatically when they are detected. You can enable or disable the option with a function button or when selecting the tracking mode. To prioritize the left or right eye, you simply move the AF joystick left or right. On the A7 Mark III, you have two options. You can activate face and IIF and let the camera detect faces and eyes automatically while engaging focus, which is similar to the Canon. Or you can assign IIF to a function button and focus on the eyes only when you need it. This way you keep IIF separate from the normal focusing method. You can't, however, specify a left or right eye, which is a bit annoying. Normally, I test the cameras in different events, including sports events, to see how the autofocus works in as many situations as possible. But right now, because of COVID, uh, it's not possible. Basically, there are no events around. But fortunately, I could go to my usual location where I test the cameras for birds in flight. And both cameras have an animal IF function. Um, with the Sony, it's animal AIF, it focuses on the eye of the animal, and the Canon can also focus on the head or the body of the animal. And one key difference is that the Canon can focus on birds, whereas the Sony IF for animal doesn't work for birds, or this doesn't work well, it never really worked when I tried it. The EOS R6 didn't disappoint and gave me an excellent score of 93% or 97%. The green score means that only the 100% in focus shots were counted. The blue score means that also slightly soft results are counted. This means focus that is maybe 90-95% accurate. And for reference, this is how the Canon compares to other mirrorless cameras. Animal detection is definitely among the settings I recommend to use. It recognizes the bird right away and can focus on the eye even when it is small in the frame. With a bird flying erratically, it may not always detect the eye but always stays on the body and very often on the head, which is enough to get focus where you want it. If the animal is not detected for some reason, the camera uses the normal tracking mode, which is also very effective. The R6 has a lot of settings to control the autofocus behavior and some of them are not intuitive to understand at first, so fine-tuning the camera for the maximum performance is not an easy task. But even with less than optimal settings, the hit rate remains around 85%.
The Sony does well with birds in flight, but doesn't reach the same level as the R6, with my score being 77% and 96% respectively. Its autofocus system is easier to configure, however, because there are less settings to worry about. And here is how it compares to other cameras. If you want to know more about mirrorless cameras and birds in flight, how do I create the score, please visit our website mirrorlesscomparison.com, I'll leave the link in the description. Let's talk about shutter and continuous shooting speed, but first let's have a listen how the two cameras sound when taking a picture. So both cameras have a maximum shutter speed of 1 8000th of a second. They both have an electronic shutter and an electronic first curtain shutter mode. And the R6 can shoot up to 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter or 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter. The A7 Mark III can do 10 frames per second. And one curious thing about the R6 is that when you choose the electronic shutter, you cannot set a lower continuous shooting speed. It always shoots at 20 frames per second, even if you choose the high, medium, or low uh, speed mode. Whereas with the mechanical shutter, it does 8 frames per second, 6 frames per second, and 3 frames per second, like the Sony. At the maximum speed of 12 frames per second, or 20 frames per second, the EOS R6 shows you the last image taken in rapid succession instead of live view. The S7 Mark III does the same at 10 frames per second. This means that what you see has just happened an instant ago, rather than happening in real time. That said, when working at 20 frames per second, the sequence is so fast that this rarely poses an issue, even with birds in flight. Plus, the shutter lag of the Canon camera is really short. With slower speeds, both cameras show you live view with blackouts. For the R6, you need firmware 120 and enable this option in the menu. If disabled, the camera mixes live view with the image just captured, basically covering the blackout with the recorded image. But I find this to introduce a weird lag effect and it can become distracting, so I'm glad Canon gave us the option of real blackouts with the firmware update. When using the electronic shutter, both cameras can produce distortion when panning quickly. This phenomenon is known as rolling shutter. The R6 has a faster sense readout and suffers less from it, as you can see. I've used the electronic shutter with birds in flight on the Canon and these distortions were not too visible, also thanks to the more complex shape of the animal itself. However, keep in mind that for both cameras, the bit depth goes from 14 to 12 bit when shooting RAW. Finally, let's talk about buffer. The Canon is superior here as well. It can shoot at 12 frames per second at full speed for about 20 seconds with RAW files, that is 240 frames in total, or more than 60 seconds with JPEGs, which is more than 700 shots. Then it starts taking short intervals to clear the buffer. At 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter, the R6 lasts for about 5 seconds at full speed with RAW files, or more than 30 seconds with JPEGs. The S7 III can shoot RAW images at 10 frames per second for about 9 seconds before slowing down. With JPEGs, it lasts up to 17 seconds. The Canon EOS R6 is the first Canon camera to include in-body image stabilization, along with the R5. Sony first introduced this technology on a full-frame camera with the S7 Mark II in 2014. The R6 offers 8 stops of compensation, which is the highest rating ever given to a camera. However, not every lens gives you the same rating, for example, it can go as low as 6.5 stops, so check the Canon website to see exactly which lens gives you the best score. The A7 Mark III has 5 stops of compensation, and both cameras can use the sensor stabilization alone, so the 5 axes are used on the sensor, or they can combine three axes of the sensor with E-mount or earth mount lenses that have optical stabilization. To test the performance of these two cameras, I took pictures at different shutter speed, and for every shutter speed, I took 10 shots. And that is not only to see at which shutter speed it is possible to have a sharp result, but also how consistent the performance is. Given Canon's claim of 8 stops of compensation, I started with a super slow speed of 8 seconds at 24mm, but none of the images were sharp. With the Sony, I didn't even bother trying. It is at 2 seconds that the R6 delivered the first acceptable results. The Sony delivered one good shot at 2 seconds and 3 good ones at 1 second, which is more than I was expecting. 
you don't get a 50% or higher hit rate before half a second or one fourth of a second. This means that at one second or two seconds, you need to be patient, try to be as still as possible and take multiple shots to increase the chance of bringing home at least one good photo. At 50mm, both cameras deliver something good at one second, but the keeper rate only increases from one fourth of a second, especially with the Canon model. At 105mm, the R6 doesn't do miracles, but 40% at one fourth of a second is still very good performance overall. With the Sony, you need a value faster than one eighth of a second to reach the same hit rate. Finally, I tested two lenses that don't have optical stabilization to see how each cam would cope with sensor stabilization alone. The performance is not as good as with the zoom lenses we saw before, but the A7 Mark III is not far from the R6 performance after the half a second mark. So what is interesting to note in this test is that between one second and one eighth of a second, which are the shutter speed you're likely to use the most, the Canon has a better performance overall, but there isn't a drastic difference like a three stops of compensation difference that the official specs suggest. Remember that there are other factors that can influence the result, for example, how steady you are when holding the camera, how comfortable you are in your position, and in my experience, you don't always get the same performance every time. You can also increase your success rate by using the electronic first curtain shutter, and you can also set the camera to continuous shooting mode. You don't need the faster speed, but even a medium speed of six frames per second is enough. So you capture multiple shots in a row and the shots that are in the middle of the sequence are likely to be sharper than the first ones or the last ones. I'm going to skip extra features, uh, things like bracketing or multiple exposure. You can read a list of all the extra features these cameras have on our website mirrorscomparison.com. I haven't forgot about video, but as a reminder, we have a separate episode, a separate video just for the movie recording capabilities. And again, you find the links in the cards in the description. And then we need to talk about prices. The EOS R6 can be found at the retail price of $2,500 or £2,500 or €2,700 for the body only. The A7 Mark III can be found for less than $2,000, £2,000 or €2,000. So there is a reason why the A7 Mark III is less expensive because there's a two years gap between these two models. The A7 Mark III was released in 2018, the Canon has been released in 2020. A few words about the lens system. So uh, Sony now has a lot to choose from, not only from Sony itself, but also from third party brands like Sigma, Tamron, Samyang, Zeiss. And also there is a good selection of affordable lenses, which is something very important for a camera system. The Canon system was born two years ago, so obviously there are less lenses at the time of publishing this video, but Canon is making a big effort to release as many lenses as possible. And of course, in case of both cameras, you can use adapted lenses, adapted DSLR lenses with adapters that will maintain autofocus. In the case of the Canon, that is actually a better advantage because Canon DSLR lenses on the R6 are fast. With Sony, you can also get very good performance, but it will depend on the lens and the adapter itself, but that remains an option for both cameras. Right, final words about these two cameras. I think the A7 Mark III, as we said, is a bit older. Some things start to feel a bit out of date, but overall it remains a very competitive camera because of the price. As we said, it's a low price. Also, the sensor is still a very, very good sensor, one of the very best you can find on the market. And you have access to a lot of lenses, like we said. Price aside and age aside, I think the Canon EOS R6 is a better camera overall. I prefer the ergonomics, I prefer the controls. The autofocus is more reliable in every kind of situation. It has a faster continuous shooting speed, a better electronic viewfinder, a better touchscreen. So overall, it is a better camera in many ways. And I'm glad to say that because it shows that Canon is finally taking mirrorless cameras seriously and they finally release on the market a product that is very competitive. Of course, there is an elephant in the room a successor to the Sigma Mark III could come to the market next year. And in that case, Sony might be able to not just close the gap with the R6 when it comes to different specs, but even do better in other areas. So we'll have probably to do this comparison again once the S7 Mark IV comes out. And I think I'm done talking. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please like 
and subscribe to our channel. And as usual, if you have any question, I'm happy to respond as soon as I can. Leave a comment below and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.